Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. It's getting to be that exciting time of year again, planning for next year. So I thought that today I would go over with you what my littles will be using in our homeschool next year. I'm going to actually break our curriculum into three separate videos. I'm going to do the littles today and next week I will do the middles and hopefully next week also I will get to do my high schoolers then or what I call my teens. And today, my littles all asked if they could be in the video with me, so I'm going to introduce you to the littles as I go over each of their curriculums. And the first thing that I want to talk about is that I want you to remember that we are relaxed homeschoolers. So I know that there are a lot of curriculum videos out there where each child will have like seven or eight textbooks that they're using. That is not what you're going to see here. Um, if you're looking for a video that's going to have seven or eight textbooks for each child, this isn't the video for you. What, what we do is they only do their, they only have their own phonics and math books. Everything else they either share or we do together as a group. And my cat is trying to be in the video. I always have a cat trying to get in one of my videos. Usually it's Bella, today it's Luna. So anyway, she might make a cameo too with my kids. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you what my four-year-old who will be in, if you, if you count grades or if you like do grades, she would be in kindergarten next year. So I'm gonna start with her. Okay, so this is my first of my three littles that I have. And do you want to tell them your name? Kenzie. Her name is Kenzie. And she will be starting kindergarten next year, so I'm going to show you what she is going to be using. For phonics, Kenzie is going to be using Explode the Code. And I'm going to admit that I have never used this before. I'm not really sure um, how I'm going to like it. I usually do adventures in phonics. That's what all of my other kids have done for phonics, and we really liked it. And the reason that I actually got Explode the Code is because I had an Amazon gift card <laughs> that I wanted to use, and they were out of adventures in phonics level A, but they did have Explode the Code. And since a bunch of people whom I trust told me about Explode the Code, and I know that they have a very similar homeschooling um, style to me, I decided that I'm going to try it. So I'm just gonna page through the inside just so you can get a glimpse of it. Again, I can't really tell you much about this. I may do a video about it, maybe in a, in a few months after we've used it, but we will not be starting this until around July, which is when we start our new homeschool year. And it is very, very different from Adventures in Phonics. Um, she may actually like it. Some of my kids didn't like the repetition in Adventures in Phonics, having to write the, the same letter over and over and over again. Are you waving? Um, so this has more pictures in it. Um, and if, if you look here, there's little sentences towards the end. And this is just the first book of Explode the Code. Okay, Kenzie. You think it can sit still for me? Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, okay, you need to sit still. Okay, so anyway, so you're shaking the camera. So anyway, so next, what she's going to be using for math next year is a Becca, and she's actually doing the first grade math book for Abeka next year because I checked out the Abeka kindergarten book and I noticed that she already knew all of that stuff. So this we're going to be starting her in first grade and actually she's already been doing it um, for the past few days. She's already started doing this. She was really excited to get it. Yes you. So yeah see so as you can see she already did start doing it. Yeah we know you're four. Okay so she's going to be using a Becca for first grade. And she's going to supplement with CTC math also um, as much as needed. And those are the only two things that I have just for Kenzie. So next I'm going to move on to next year's second grader. Okay, so now this is, you wanna tell them your name? Summer. This is Summer and she will be in second grade next year. She actually has a birthday coming up next month. She'll be seven. And the first thing that you're going to notice with her phonics is that she does not have a brand new phonics book for next year because what I am going to have her do is finish up 
her Adventures in Phonics level A before she moves on to a level B, which this one is actually her sister's, but this is what she will be getting once she finishes this, this book here. And again, Adventures in Phonics is something, this is by Christian Liberty Press, by the way, and this is something that I have been using for years with my kids. And I really, really do like it. Um, and she has papers falling out of here. And it, it is Christian based, so it, it, it does um, really work some verses into here and it talks about God in here and I really like those it really deals with some character issues in here and so I really enjoy this with her now you can't see this in the beginning of this book because she has been already using it this year but it starts them out very slowly with letters where they have to write the letters over and over again and as they write the letters over and over say for example if they're writing a B as they're writing the B they just say but 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 which is why some of my kids didn't really like this all this all that much, um, but she seems to be doing really well with it. So this is what she's using, and after she finishes this, she will be moving on to level B. So for math, she is also using a Becca, um, and she's going to be doing second grade. And I don't know if you saw my curriculum video from last year, but we were actually talking about using um, Christian Liberty Press. I think it's called Liberty Mathematics, which is what we had been using for years. And then someone gave me an Abeka math book for first grade for her. And I thought, well, I'm going to use it because it was given to me for free. And what I found, I always loved Liberty Mathematics. And I so I really, looking through it, I, I didn't think that I was going to like it as much as Liberty Math, but it turns out that I love the Abeka math books for the younger kids because it has a spiral-based approach to math, and there's so much review in it. The, the pages are colorful. They're really engaging for the kids. And again, I really, really enjoy... Are you being a ham, too? I need you to sit still, please. Thank you. Okay. So, this is my life. So, here are some more pages from here. And again, as you can notice, it's not the same thing on every single page. They have different sorts of problems. Sometimes they may do, tell, I'm reading the temperature, sometimes they may do counting money, adding and subtracting, graphing, telling time. So it's not like they work on the concepts one page at a time. They throw in a little bit of each concept onto each page. And that's really, I think, why my, my daughter likes it, because you like using your first grade book like this, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she really likes it because not only is it giving her all of that review, but it is, is keeping it from getting boring, you know, from doing the same thing over and over and over again. So it just adds some variety to it, which I think the kids really do enjoy. So that's it for her individual books. Oh, by the way, she will also be supplementing with CTC Math. They will all be supplementing with CTC Math. So anyway, we're going to move on to next year's third graders work. Okay, so now I have here next year's third grader. Do you want to tell them your name? Ireland. This is Ireland, and she will be going into third grade next year. And so for Ireland, what we are actually going to do is she is going to finish off her Adventures in Phonics Level B book because it really does, at the end of the book, have a lot of good review of words for the children, even if they're reading well, it has a lot of fill in the blank, choose the right word. And I, so I really do think that it will give her a really solid foundation in phonics if I just have her finish out um, Adventures in Phonics Level B. Now there is an Adventures in Phonics Level C, but I usually do not go up that far with the kids. They usually do not end up needing it. So that's what we're going to be using. After she finishes this book next year, she actually will be moving on to copy work then, which is what I do with the older kids. Um, what they do is I have them decorate um, a little composition book. Now this is not Ireland's. She hasn't gotten one yet because she didn't start a copy work book like this yet. But what they do is they just decorate a little composition book. And we usually go to Shel Silverstein because his poems are fun and that's what they start copying and that really helps them with their spelling and grammar. It helps them learn to write a little bit 
um, a little bit longer passages than they're used to. It shows punctuation. Um, it shows sentence variety, how there are different ways to write sentences. So again, this isn't something that she has already. Um, this is her sister's, but she will be making one of these when she does her phonics for next, not phonics, copy work for next year after she finishes her phonics book. And again, Abeka, yes, I, I, if you notice, I'm not doing Life of Fred this year. Um, I noticed that Life of Fred really worked wonders for my kids. It really helped them to like math more. But eventually, we really did get to the point where I found that my kids were not learning um, as quickly or as well as I knew they could. It kind of, it seemed like they were remaining, they were remaining stagnant for a while. And they, they really, I hate to say it because I think the stories are so cute, but they started getting a little bored with the stories. So we are going to switch to a Becca for next year, um, at least with my younger kids. Because again, I, it's just, I love the, the spiral based approach to the math. I love that the work doesn't seem like it's, that, like it takes so long because again, there is that bit of variety in these Abeka math books. So yes, we're doing, that's a big change because we've used Life of Fred for a really long time. But yeah, we're, we're going to Abeka. And again, yes, she is going to be supplementing with CTC math. So that's it for their individual work. Now I'm going to move on next to the things that they either share or that they do together. Okay, now before I get started on the things that they either share or that they do together, I'm just going to remind you again to remember that we are relaxed homeschoolers. They do their language arts and math, um, usually on their own, within their own books not necessarily language arts, even just their phonics, and the rest of it they either do together or they share. And I do want to point out at this time is that I feel really strongly about the fact that children at this age really do learn best from play, which is why you will not see me loading all kinds of work onto them. And I think it's really important to give children at this age, especially, I think all children, but especially children at this age, they really need to be given lots of free time so that they can explore and make sense of the world on their own. And to be honest, I actually think that children at this age really would do best just learning the three R's um, and doing uh, interest-led learning for the rest of the day. So the three R's are reading, writing, and arithmetic. At this age, at the littles age, I honestly do not feel that they need anything additional when it comes to social studies, history, science, at least not from structured lessons. They will learn far more from the world and from everyday life than they would from any structured lesson or worksheet that you put in front of them. With that being said though, um, my eight-year-old Ireland, the last one that was here with me, she actually did start asking for me to do structured lessons with them every once in a while because she saw her older siblings doing it and she wanted to start doing the sorts of things that they do together. So I did start doing more structured lessons with them with the other subjects. Um, just twice a week though. So I'm gonna to get to that in a minute, but first of all, I'm gonna show you what they're using for spelling. They're going to be using Natural Speller. And bless you, my son sneezed. Anyway, so they're going to be using Natural Speller. And Natural Speller was highly recommended to me. It has spelling words for all of the different grades up through from kindergarten through grade eight. And it has different activity ideas that you can do with your children for spelling. And to be honest with you, if you watch any of my videos, you know that I always have my own twist on things. And as I was paging through um, this book, while the, the activities that they give really are interesting and they really give good ideas, to me, a lot of them really just felt like they would make our home feel too much like school. And I try to avoid that at all costs. Um, the reason that I want my kids to do spelling is because I want them to know how to spell well because it doesn't come naturally to everybody. Some kids, spelling comes naturally, some kids it doesn't. So I do want them to do spelling um, just, just so that they learn how to spell the words. I don't feel that they need to do 
all of the additional activities though to go with it in order to spell the words. I think that if you j if they just do a lot of reading and if you speak to them in a conversation in a conversational tone, they're going to learn all of their vocabulary that way. So, why so what we're going to be doing with natural spellers, I will be using the word list for my children. But they're just going to continue doing what they've been doing right now is they will just write them either two or three times each every day depending on the age. Well, they don't do it on Fridays because that is our nature study, our nature study day, which I will get to later on. But anyway, again, yes. So if you like different activities for your children, this is really good for that. Again, I will just be doing it for them to write their words two or three times each. I just want them to learn how to spell. Um, I try as hard as I can not to make our home feel like a classroom because if I was gonna put my kids in a classroom, I would just send them to the school. So there's that. Next, you are going to see that this book is really beat up because it has been through one, two, three, four kids now, where, well the fourth one will be starting it now, teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. Now my daughter Ireland, um, the one who will be going to third grade, she's just about done with it this year. We do not do this every day. We alternate it with their phonics program. So they do their phonics twice a week and they do teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons um, twice a week also. So that's why it's taking us a little bit longer to get through this book than it normally would if you would do it every day. Just because I really do like to add variety to our days. I want my kids to love to learn. I don't want them to get bored. So all three of them will be going through this. And again, Ireland probably will not have much longer to go through that. And we do not do reading um, curriculums like reading comprehension, those sorts of things. I really, as someone who loves reading, I really think that they suck the fun out of reading completely. So once she is done with Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons, she's just going to be reading living books, possibly doing some copy work out of them, maybe doing some notebooking with them, but we will not have an actual formal reading curriculum for her. And that actually goes with writing too. The writing, they, they just learn through writing their spelling words, writing their copy work, um, in their work together. These are all things that we integrate naturally into their lessons, so it's not something that I feel I have to push on them at this young age, um, because again, I want them to like doing this stuff. So I mentioned earlier that they only do phonics twice a week and teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons twice a week, because one day a week we reserve for nature study day. Um, and this actually we just started doing recently, because I really think that we just needed to have that break on a Friday, my kids are really, really outdoors kids. So they, they, they like getting out. So what we're doing for nature study every Friday, all we do is on Fridays, we, we will all read a read aloud together. We will go do a nature study, um, just different areas of our neighborhood, maybe like a wooded area, a park. Maybe we would just go for a nature walk um, down the street where my mom lives, there's woods. It all depends, but when we come back, they will usually fill out their little nature study book. And this is something Summer, my my almost seven year old, she made this one, They she just made this. So, so far she only has one, one flower in it. And she actually drew this last week and this, it was raining last week. So there wasn't even actually a nature study walk last week. So she just drew the flower because the kids had painted flower pots. So she did that. So anyway, that will be our, our Friday work. So now what they're actually going to be doing together um, to integrate all of the other subjects is Beautiful Feet books. They're doing Around the World with Picture Books Part 1. And again, we started doing this maybe two months ago, um, but since we only do it twice a week, because this is something else that we only do twice a week, um, it, it, is, it is going to last us more than, than just one year. So that is what we're going to be continuing on with next year. And we love it. We love Beautiful Feet books, period. Just completely, because my older kids use the American History one, and they're actually still going through that. And we, well, we'll go through that in the middles. I'm not going to get started on that. But anyway, we love that. So anyway, 
And what this one is about, it, it goes over, it uses picture books to um, teach your kids about China, Japan, Thailand, India, Antarctica, Australia, Morocco, Egypt, Tanzania, and, Ken and Kenya, Ghana, and it incorporates nature drawings in it, it incorporates art, it gives you different ideas for um, videos that your kids can watch when they're learning about sometimes like the different animals or the Chinese New Year. So, so far we've gone through the they've been learning about China and we're just about finished with China and right here is my daughter's little notebook that she made to go with that so they're going to be continuing with this I'm not going to get into this too heavily just because next month I'm going to be doing um, a comprehensive review of this curriculum so I just wanted to give you a look at it today and yes we are definitely going to be finishing it next year well continuing with it because we love it it's such a gentle approach to learning if i were going to put structured lessons in to kids this young which my daughter asked for yes it would be through beautiful feet books because there's just for if you ask me there are no better structured lessons that you can do with your children at this age and so these are just some of the books i'm not going to show you all of them but some of the books that they use in beautiful feet books there's the story about ping there's anno's china once, once a mouse. Hush. Oops, there's something stuck on the back. The lotus seed. Crow boy. The tale of the Mandarin ducks. Grandfather's journey, which we actually read when we were doing five in a year, five in a row last year, and we really like that book. And then this is my favorite book that comes with it: Maps. I love maps. I really do. And just wait till you see the inside of these books <laughs> in next in next month's video. Yeah, there's a little teaser for you. Um, you have to watch next month's video if you want to see the whole inside of the Beautiful Feet books. So anyway, um, I want to see, is that everything that I got? Yeah. Now I mentioned that two days a week they're going to be doing Beautiful Feet books. The other two days a week is actually just going to be they do the three R's and then I just let them follow their interests the rest of the day. Because again, I really do think that kids at this age, they need time to do the things that they want to do because that is how they learn best. So um, that is it for our 2018-2019 curriculum for our littles, um, kindergarten, second and third grade for next year. Um, again, next week I will be going over the curriculum for the middles and the teens. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to do that, I would love for you to do that. And also, if you have any questions or comments, just leave it down below. And I promise you, sometimes it does take me a few days to get back to you, but I promise that I will get back to you. So have a great day.